off the. I got one of those. Okay. We good? Is it going? So as I was saying. Yeah, you were talking about the HP guy that you were carved oh, at. Yeah, you brought him in. Yeah, and showed him the cover yes. with the storage, and yeah. they then adopted that. I've heard. I understand that the volume hasn't been so good. I have that's to. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But sometime later, you know, we collected one million dollars from HP for various patents. Because they came in and saw well, your stuff. that was only one one piece of a whole bunch of. And most of the patents were Henry P. Hart. Uh, now and he got to hold the million dollar check up. Nice. And for that and his inventions, he was supposed to collect a dollar. He never paid him the dollar. Of course not. Now, you've been telling us, uh, we've known you for 40 years or so, and you've been telling us all the time that you taught Henry Hall everything he's ever known. Is that the truth, Harold? That, that was the truth. It's now far from the truth because Henry was ahead of me as a coach. Oh, okay. He was a couple of years ahead of me. Yep. Okay. Smile Love it. Yep. <laughs> a lot of distractions here, folks, but okay. moving right along. Speed up. So, let's see. We're, uh, we're in uh, 1850. No, no, we've moved along since then. Oh, we got 12 pages. Oh, yeah. So, let's move on. CPO. Tell us about CPO. This is 1968. Probably. Yeah, in that time. There's an engineer working for uh, Dick Frank yeah. and uh, Herb Stratum. I had Jim Skilling, Dave Nixon. But I had managerial talent. They wanted talent. I don't know about the talent. Oh, yeah. But I, I wasn't as good an engineer as many of them. Ah, okay, I, I get that so idea. I figured I would... Have another beer, Harold. Th yep. Thanks a lot. Thank you get a little dry. Yeah. Thank you, my boy. <laughs> so I thought I'd maybe try the managerial. Uh -huh. So Fitz Morris, who had taken over from P.K. McElroy, okay. I used to call it specials mm -hmm. in those days, and it was distributed in different parts. McElroy one, ran it out of his... Administrative office. Yep. He'd get engineered when he had a customer. He'd come up to him. any engineer he could grab. Yep. And say, hey, build one of these for this guy. And they'd go over to drafting and work with Larry Mounts mm -hmm. and Carter Hollis and a bunch there. And when they wanted something in manufacturing, Dick Carlson and his right hand man, Eddie Ellis. Eddie Ellis, of steady, course. Steady Eddie. Steady Eddie. Eddie. He was yeah. Still with us. Yep. So for whatever reason, uh, McElroy retired. Yeah. Fitzmaurice took over that role, mm -hmm. but he had he was too busy. Yeah. So, but I think he said, Harold, why don't you join me? Because for, I guess I was helping him on a lot of specials. You be the manager. We'll get some engineers. We'll get the guys out of production. Yep. We'll get draftsmen, and we'll form the custom product operation. operation. CPO. And exactly. we did. Yep. We did. And I understand that uh, you turned that completely around. No, there was no turning around. It just made it bigger. Ah, you made it bigger. Because Robert Grady Folks yeah. had an angel who wanted to use his automatic bridge in a Bell Labs Western Electric Western Cable Electric. Testing System. Yep. The famous Western Electric Big system. Big deal. Yeah. yeah. So he was our first big deal, and I got Dick Setti in there to run the yep. engineering guys. Yep. And he brought in some engineers. So we had an engineering group. We had a marketing group. We had Dave, Dave Allen. Dave Allen. Came back okay. from the Washington office. Yep. And Dave from Malden. The other okay. Dave. What's his name? Don't know. Sure you do. I'll come up with it. Okay, come up anyway, with it. Anyway, they were the marketing department. Is there any truth to the rumor that the sales force called you no bid Harold? I had problems. I had problems yeah. because, uh, yeah, and Bill Harrison would say, don't you like to get bonuses? Because we hadn't had a bonus. Yeah. And he would say, this customer wants this. And I said, ah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, okay. <laughs> Bob Bull. Bob Bull got a kick out of me, you know, because I... I would denigrate the customers, which is not, 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 a, good, good thing, no. not a good move at all. No, not a good thing. No, but I wised up after a while. But CPO, I, you know, CPO was uh, really a big operation. Pretty, yeah, it got pretty big. Said he took over after yep. I went west. Yep. No, no. What happened? Well, we next, well, 1973, you're now a vice president of the company. Yeah. But How did that happen? 
because shit luck. Shit luck? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Right place. Right I don't time. No. no well, the no. reason being, we had uh, Bob Folks was engineering manager, yep. I think, in the VP, mm -hmm. and he left to go down to Arizona. Him and Bob Anderson and Dave Nixon to yep. form Omnicom. Omnicom, right. And that after the computer group folded, because I was involved right. in the That's computer right. group project. Okay. Myth, yep. Howard Painter, and, and those guys. Sergeant, I didn't know Sergeant. Sergeant was out there. Jack uh, Cuddy. Yeah. Yep. The yeah. whole the whole crew out there. So anyway, that was year seventy two. Mm -hmm. We lost money for the first, first time. time. Yep. And that's when Ivan Easton, I guess, wised up to the fact that the way the company was financed, it depended on making money to keep going. <laughs> yep. Because there was no slush fund, not enough mm -hmm. cash. And so the Lot. Peter McCalga was building up in Europe, mm -hmm. and that cost us a million or so. Mm -hmm. Leo Chamberlain, my lovely buddy, was out on the west coast in time data. Yep, time data. That was another minus a million or so. Yep. And, and the regular business, I think, lost about a million. So I think we had three million in the hole. Uh, <clears throat> Don Sinclair fell on his sword. Yep. And, and that's when Thurston came in. Picked Bill Thurston. Yep. Folks is gone out of engineering. Yep. Thurston picks me. Yep. To hold it together. Hold it together. And it wasn't engineering as such because we had gone into business areas. Right. So I was so called functional engineering. Yep. As opposed to the different product groups. Yep. Which Matrix management, not good. Yeah, not good. and then then in uh, let's see what are oh 1975ish uh, CTD component test systems. Uh, Henry Hall, Danny Avenue, Bill Cable. That came first. That's right. Oh, I became a business leader. I said this functional crap ain't gonna cut it. Right. C oh, and, and I wanted CPO to be on the other side of the matrix. The matrix. So uh, but, I became a business area then. And you went after components. And we I know Dick, it electronic instrument division. Yeah, and I know Dick Rogers was going system, for the systems. Exactly so. But we had some great technologies. And, and we had uh, in the instruments. Yeah. yeah, HFE and all that HFE, stuff. HFE, yeah. Those but, were about the three. But I remember that, that Acoustics. the instrument line had been kind of neglected for quite a while, I think, Indeed. at that point. And, Indeed. and you guys came up. And started doing well, things. Abenaim and Henry Hall. Yeah. And Mike yeah. Guype, I think, joined the team Geip as well. Guype was in there. Yep. Yeah. That's right. And that was the, the birth of the DigiBridge area, That's which right. was the yeah. microprocessor on board Henry. with the instrumentation. And somewhere along the line, we get this guy William Cable, memory testers. Yep. And that got us into semiconductor. Another guy who a lot smarter than he looks, Bill Cable, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pay no attention to the man in front of the camera. And then after that, you guys did a couple other things, the 1731 and 1732 out of that group, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. And those were all successes. That's Everything, right. The DigiBridge that, re, 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 reestablished what, what right. could be done with, a, right. with a, that that's kind right. of stuff. It was great. But that was cable, 1731, 32, digitalized C test, a linear IC test. And then you went out to California for a few years. Yeah. You took Dickie with you, and Dickie's never come back. And, uh, Which we've never forgiven you for. That's right. Yeah. And uh, who was it? Uh, Sergeant. Yep. You saw his recent beat. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Yep. Where he uh, congratulated me for taking Dickie's motorcycle. Yep, out West. there. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Our company expense. Uh, but you're out there for three years. What was that like out there? Oh, it was great. Yep. I was more or less independent of the higher ups way back in yep. pocket. And that's when I learned this business about trying to ma centralize management versus the guys right on the scene, yep. on the firing line. And it worked. We did, did, did a good job out there. Dickie was a big part of it. Yep. Because he was my man. Oh, yeah. yeah he was <laughs> the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was good. Because I remember the interaction so with the time data engineers and those yeah, guys. And, yeah, and yeah. You needed somebody like That's Dickie. That's right. Who could hold his own. Yeah, more than hold his own. That's right. Exactly. And, uh, Obviously, I've been drinking, Dick. Yeah, and Savitkovich and manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Then, then he came back. Soderman, of course, was the yeah, so real be. secret. Well, yeah. You know, because he would do the day by day and filter all the problems. He, he was wonderful. 
He was a great guy. Oh, I, I loved him. Every, everybody always yeah, spoke highly. I know, yeah. but I mean, he, he was great because he was there to quiet the injuries down and all that. He was in the office and smiling. Oh, yeah. Well, he was a big smiler, too. Yeah. Yeah, he, he really great did guy. have a great time. <laughs> then he came back and then you did something nobody ever thought about doing is revitalizing Bolt. You did the Bolt? Well, that was a, see, don't forget, we were doing good. Quality was the push with QMP? Yeah, but not, yeah, but bef before then, I was, mm -hmm. we had corporate headquarters. So when I came back from the West Coast, uh, Eric Mudema took over from me. Oh, that's right, I remember yeah. that, yeah. <clears throat> And I went to the corporate headquarters. Oh, all them. Yeah. yeah, because the businesses were running. Yep. And we were like a, and we were boards. We had boards. I was on the board of Howie Painters yeah. Operation in uh, Arizona, and we had the Walt Hines on the Concord board. Walt, yeah. Walt yep. Hines, and I forget, I forget who else we had. Yeah. These, Vice presidents down in Waltham doing nothing. I was gonna say that couldn't have been too interesting for you. Well, yeah, you go out. And yeah, you go out to the real people, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. But then uh, Bolton Group, right? You took over Bolton. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that was because Tom McKenzie had a problem. His wife was ill, and he didn't want to be manager. He like he was like Soderman, a great second in command. Yep. Second in command. And the poor guy just died. I know. So Mackenzie wanted relief from his general manager position. And <clears throat> my role at that time had become utility outfield. Yeah, exactly. Problem yeah. area. Like yeah. the Problem West, area, yeah. West Go Coast. here, yeah. get that fixed. Go out there, well, you know, Cable, and Cable followed in your footsteps yeah. doing the same thing. Yeah. 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 So I was utility outfielder, so when Thurston needed somebody to help Tom out, that became my assignment, and that was great. We didn't have Richie and q and they were in Concord. Yep. So we had Cable-E and these functional operations, machine shop. Yeah, the microelectronics out yeah. there with Holche. Yeah, Holche, yeah. 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 But uh, somehow or other, I don't know how I got uh, Richie out there with his q and Basically, they wanted to move as far I as I so. I didn't want to get out of the basic yeah. air and, and yeah. do their own thing. But what was interesting is you had really an eclectic mix of different people yeah. out there. That's but right. it was at the Bolton plant, that's right. and which and I started at the Bolton. Plant that's right. And knew it pretty well, and yeah. and it was always like almost a second class because Concord was right that's down right. the street. That's right. And I think you really injected a lot of life into that. Well, that with a team lot of there. help again. Yeah. So that was that was pretty unique. Yeah, Jack I Yetman, Yetman was my that. right hand yep. manufacturing guy, yep. and Cable as an engineering manager, and then Richie. So we had the the core group there. Yeah. Great, great guys, guys. All terrific all guys. guys. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, we're almost done with your. Uh, I hope so. You go out. You know. Good dragging on. Okay, we'll we'll <laughs> finish it up. Basically, you took early retirement in 1986. 86. They came up with the brilliant. Well, you know, you know what happened. Formula 70. No, please say. Well, the company came upon bad times because of another acquisition on the West Coast. Yeah. Uh, semiconductor Test Division, sure SPD, yep. which blew somewhat south of, of a hundred million. Yeah, that was and that really big was, giant test system competing yeah. with Teradyne uh, chips. Yeah. Trying to, I think, not so much Teradyne as the Intel. Oh uh, yeah, those guys, right. yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and the product wasn't quite working, and <laughs> which ain't good. So that really shook up the company, and uh, things were bad for a while. Yep, lost a lot of good people. And I was, again, utility outfielder, no place to put me, so Thurston had me running these, uh, these crazy Englishmen that had come with the other acquisition there. Oh, the Cirrus acquisition? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was the simulator and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was Gordon good, Robinson good and those guys. Yeah, those were good guys. But yep. there was another whole gang. Yeah, in I, fact, I went to England. Yeah, you went to England. Yeah, I was running. A couple of years. Yeah, but a lot of traveling back and forth. My basic mission being go out there, fire the balls. See, that was part of the. Yeah, oh yeah, that's always part of the. Hatch. You just don't look like a hatchet man. Well, that's right. 
You just don't. That's right. So I could fire him, and he still likes me. He still liked him. <laughs> That's pretty good. And he also did something with Asia, right? The Asian uh, yeah, the sales force venture. and the strategy, the joint yeah, venture out there. Japan, yeah. 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 You really did an awful lot. A lot of that. traveling. A lot of traveling, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you took Formula 70 in the early... Yeah, Whatever it was, I guess. Whatever it was. Things were not looking good. Yeah. And Thurston wasn't going to pick me to be his successor. <laughs> I uh, so let's we, we can wrap this up real quick, but I have I I, I have some personal notes if I may. Have. Oh, sorry. Yep. First time I ever laid eyes on Harold was fittingly in a bar room. Howard yep. Johnson. Howard Johnson's absolutely on a Friday afternoon. Yep. And a GR vice president, yes, but truly a man of the people. Am I in there? That seems to be pointing at you. I have no idea. If you, I hope you're in there because well, if you ain't in just there, wait a second. all right. I think Tony swung it. Certainly he didn't get you out of the picture. No, it's not bad. Okay, good. Huh? You were in the picture. I think so. Because it's important to be in the picture. Harry. That's right. Even now. That's right. <laughs> but at any rate, the first time it's I met you. my birthday, you know, guys. Exactly. First time I met you. And in 40 years that I've known you, I haven't really changed all that much, which is really good. But I remember the early days. We're almost finished here. In the early days, I remember the Benson Halloween party. Yeah. The costumes Superman. and all that. You used to Superman. drag Shirley to you with Superman. Tony, yeah, you probably want to eat. Oh, yeah, you had the big ear. Remember the one yeah, with the yeah. big ear? Yeah, we did a lot of that. And I remember... I think those pictures are probably on that disc. Right uh, they could be. We're about ready to look at them. We're almost done, folks. But basically... In Bear my, with us. In, the 22 year, in my 22 years of general, mm -hmm. my only real regret is I never actually worked for you or in your organization, like Benson well, did, Katie did, whatever. Well, I never did. Well, yeah. Oh, and guy. yeah, what a guy. Oh, yeah. I always regretted that, but I do remember the grad program. We were yep. in that together. That yep. was a lot of fun. Yep. And 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 but most importantly, I think, you know, because I didn't really work with you that much at the time, but after Genrad, the mm -hmm. whole the whole time now after Genrad yeah. has been a long time. I know it. And we've it. spent a lot of time together. We've had a lot of fun as well. well. That's why I like this monthly group, because you hear stories there that you never, never knew, heard before. But, yep. Because they don't care now. Yeah, exactly. It's it doesn't great. matter. Yep. <laughs> but I think basically uh, the interviews that you've been doing for the GR Breakfast are fantastic. I mean, and from my point of view, every weekday I wake up, I go to work, and at 8 o'clock, more or less, plus or minus five minutes, I get uh, the photo of the day. Are you on that list? Oh, I'm on that list, and I love it, and I think a lot of, I can speak for a lot of people. Of not <laughs> at all. Not at all. But I know I speak for a very large number of people when I say we love you, Harold. You're fun to be with. You lighten our day. Wow. Happy 85th wow. birthday. Nice. Harold McAleer, 85 years. Thanks a lot, Peter. Wow. Okay. That's a wrap. Okay. Now, how do we shut that off? No. First, we say goodbye to our many friends. Nice to be seen. The other one is editing that.